Hello and welcome to the NARC Alert, the channel where we look at YouTubers and others to see if they demonstrate any traits that fall within the spectrum of narcissistic personality disorder or NPD. These videos are for fun and entertainment purposes only, strictly my opinion, and remember, please don't send any snark to our possible narcs. So key points to remember, messy fun, and not a diagnosis. Hello, my lovely lurts, and welcome back to the Narc Alert. Tonight, I would like to welcome you to YouTube's Distinguished Lecture Series. These lectures are open to the public. Members of the press are requested to please contact the Office of Communications prior to attendance to the lecture. Seating begins no earlier than 30 minutes prior to the start and is available on a first-come, first-served basis. These forums began in 2013, and Amber Lynn Reed was soon sponsored by YouTube. Over the years, this series has brought expert opinions from Amber Lynn Reed to the general public to share her views on the major challenges and opportunities in her field and discipline. Tonight's symposium will be a compilation series of our keynote speaker, Amber Lynn Reed, introducing the Fall Lecture Series of 2022. Dehumanizing. I mean, it's been like this for years, but I just feel like lately it's been a lot and I'm just, I feel like I'm being dehumanized. So I do want to put up the definition of what it means to deprive someone or something of human qualities like personality, dignity, um, subject someone to inhuman or degrading conditions or treatment. So the part where it's like you deprive someone of qualities and personality and stuff like that, I feel like that's happening to me. I feel like I can't express how I feel. I can't share certain things that have happened to me without people pretty much saying, no, you can't feel this way. You can't be this person. You can't share these things especially when I share hobbies that I enjoy. No, you can't, you can't. That's not actually who you are as a person. You're just trying to be someone else. When I do share things about my past, people say, no, that's not true. It's almost as if you guys forget that I am a human who has had experiences. <laughs> What really makes me feel dehumanized is when my first episode of So Raw where I said, you know, I could talk about news or I could share advice that you guys might need for me. And the common response to that was, we don't want to hear you talk about the news because we don't care what you have to say about it. We don't want to hear you give advice because why... Like really, Amber Lynn giving advice? It makes me feel like I'm just not human. I have advice, you guys. I'm not completely unintelligent. I do have some common sense. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? And I am a human who lives in the United States, so I do have opinion on politics or things happening in the news. Um, and it doesn't even have to be my opinion all the time. It could just be me sharing things that are happening that maybe you guys don't know about. People forget that I am human. I do experience things. I do have opinions. I do have a voice. And I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like the vibe. It's not fair. But please just let me have a voice on my channel. And if you don't like what I'm talking about, you can click the next video. What will my channel be like when I do lose the weight? I get so many people telling me, you're gonna lose all your viewers once you lose weight and stuff like that. And that scares me because if that's true, it's like, okay, well, this is my job. What am I gonna, what am I gonna do then? Obviously I'm gonna have to get a new job, but it's like, I love this job. So that's gonna suck. And then it's like, Okay, so that doesn't make much sense because I'm constantly screaming fat phobia and trying to stand up for myself and trying to stand up for fellow fatties. 
who also experience fat phobic people in their comment section and it's like how can people say oh my god you're gonna lose viewership if you lose weight but then also in the same breath say you're not fat shamed it's not adding up if you are watching me because of how i look and the number on my scale it's fat phobia you are watching me in awe and i stand i stand in awe of you i i do have a fear of losing viewers because of success and that's really really sad and do i choose health or do i choose you know money because i need to put a roof over my head so do i choose health or do i choose career i i choose health i choose health without a doubt and the only thing i can wish for myself and for the community following me is that it'll change always lying to me wow. you're lying so much wow. dehumanized update because last episode I did talk to you guys about how I feel dehumanized. A lot of you actually agree with me, especially in my private DMs. And then there's a portion of people, especially in the comments, I noticed comments are brutal. It's like trendy to be mean to me. Okay. But in the comments, people were invalidating my feelings and how I felt. But I wanted to share a few more reasons why I feel like I am dehumanized. Bullying, fat shaming, etc. things on TikTok that have to do with me. I've seen it, people have sent it to me, and this is just another way where I feel dehumanized. Anytime someone reduces a human being to a single characteristic, especially a negative one, they're dehumanizing. So some examples of that is alcoholic, addicts, diabetic, schizophrenic, all rob people of the full complexity of their lives and reduce them to a symptom or a disorder. This is literally how it feels. You guys have created this character, Liar Lynn, that doesn't even exist. You guys make me feel like my eating disorder is the only thing that I am. And me being super morbidly obese is the only thing that I am. Or, you know, my favorite. I'm a narcissist. One, two, three. So I noticed a lot of people didn't like that I used the word dehumanized. So I decided here are some other words that I want to show you that also mean around the same thing. To degrade, to diminish, to belittle. All of those things are happening. People are degrading me, how I look, how I talk, what I wear, things that have happened with me in the past, in the present, currently, it doesn't matter what it is. People diminish my accomplishments, but they make my failures super freaking huge. Like, it's, it's wild. I am belittled all the time. So people are asking, why are you talking about this now? It's because I'm finally using my voice. For so long, I let rumors become false fact. You need to stand up for yourself. You need to use your voice. I know a lot of people just want to say, oh, ignore it, ignore it. It's different. Yeah, sure. Let's ignore someone telling me my hair is ugly. That's different. The shit that I'm talking about goes so much deeper. What happened to your merch? So the merch I made is simplistic. It's modern in my opinion. It's funny. It's something that I would enjoy wearing. I personally don't like super gaudy or colorful merch. That's not my style. That's not what I want. And the simplicity of my merch people took as laziness when you guys wouldn't even believe how long it took me to do this because I am me no understand. I do not understand how to do this. So this did take me some time um, and I liked what I made. I thoroughly did. And people were calling it lazy, saying how horrible it was and that it was ugly and just all this stuff. And it's just like, that's the style that I wanted. Me. <laughs> I like the simplicity of it. I think it's cute, it's dainty, and it's not colorful and in your face because I don't want that to be my merch. 
So many people hated it and so many people called me lazy. Instead of just expressing your opinion and saying this isn't my style, it's not something I'm into. Reached out to me like, hey girl, you know what? I see what you're doing, it's amazing and all. I'm a supporter, but I think you should look into this. Take this step. Did you research this? Did you check out your packaging there? I became Lazy Lynn, and it's like, nothing is ever good enough. People are crazy. The following we have, a big portion of it, is just brutal. They take all of our content, they think it's okay, and I know there's channels out there who react to every single video I put out. Well, did a little research. Done a little talky talky with the highest level that I can, which probably isn't much from the YouTube. But reaction channels cannot be about one singular person, especially every single one of their videos. Reaction channels are supposed to be transformative. When you're reacting to me taking off my makeup, that's not transformative reactions. <laughs> that's nothing. You're not being transformative. You are using my content to walk yourself to the bank. You are relying on Amberlynn Reed. I've been snooping because I need to know which ones to come for. No, I'm joking. No, I need to know which ones um, that I'm talking about. Like if I'm talking to YouTube, I need to have my knowledge. If I plan on doing Vlogmas, which is every day uploading, I don't want people taking my content. People on YouTube don't react to vlogs because it's taking away views. No other YouTuber would allow this. I might have to go deeper into truly striking channels that are consistently stealing my full video to react to nothing. If you were to react to like one video every like 15 that I upload, just clips here and there, huge difference versus taking almost 95% of the content that I am currently making and reacting to it on your channel. If, if no one understands that, then you're just as delusional because it's just not allowed. Not allowed. See it. Um, that's why I'm not gonna see it anymore. I can't do it right now. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't. I am not a perfect person. I, I currently, the only thing that's like, controversial is like hi i'm a little bitchy towards reaction channels i'm a little bitchy towards haters like who wouldn't be if you're coming up to me in person treating me the way that these haters do or treating me the way that these reaction channels do y'all i'm not gonna kiss your feet i'm not gonna be nice to you i'm probably gonna react the same way and I would expect anyone else to do the same. Like, I don't know where the hate comes from anymore. Like, y'all just pulling it out of your asses at this point. Because I just, yeah, I got an attitude because y'all piss me off sometimes. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Anyone else would react the same way. If you have constant just, like, harassment and rumors and just, like, like, every single day. Like, I'm not, like, this horrible, vindictive monster. I don't know where the hate comes from truthfully and I can say that like I can look you in the eyes and say that I don't know where the animosity the anger the aggression comes from you guys are horrible not all of you but a large quantity is horrible and I've reached this point where my binging used to be astronomically larger than what it is now. I have tried to explain that my binging is a lot smaller now um, in quantity. What I ordered was a binge. And for people to sit there and just say this is insulting because this isn't a binge, it's painful because it took me, you know, a couple years. It took me some time. It took me having a psychologist who specializes in binge eating disorder for me to not only binge less frequently, but for me to eat less during a binge. The comments are, yo, like it is vile, vile. 
and I know people can say don't read the comments you know what I'm going to because I need to be able to have a relationship with my supporters it's not cute it's not it's like literally not cute um the things that are being said in the video I uploaded today like it's just horrible like people are literally calling me a liar because I didn't eat enough during a binge what I it, I don't even know it just doesn't make sense at all Okay, so trigger warning, addictions, all addictions, any sort of addiction. So I just feel like it's important that I bring this up because I've been seeing a lot about how um, Feline isn't a good girlfriend because she's enabling another addiction. And I just feel like this topic is too important to not talk about. I have done a lot of things in my life um, I have done drugs, I have drank alcohol, I have done a scratch off more than once in my life. I have done things that would cause someone to become addicted. I have taken pain meds, I, you know, cough syrups and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, and never have I been addicted. Thankfully, I have never gotten addicted to a cigarette I've smoked. I've smoked like two my whole life. You know, I hate the feeling that painkillers give me so I don't really take medicine. I have never been addicted to alcohol, any sort of drug. I have never been addicted to gambling. I have only ever been addicted to food. I appreciate the concern, but I feel like in this moment, this is false outrage because this is just a fun gift based on some TikToks I've been watching recently. So I just think that it's inappropriate to be throwing this around. Addiction transferring isn't something to just speculate on or cause rumors with because people really do suffer with gambling addictions. So just for more peace and tranquility and kindness, can you guys please stop leaving comments like that. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining me. A look at Amber's lecture series. Are you getting sick of being told off? I know I am. Let's hope that's the end of the lectures for this year, onward and upward with Amber Lynn Reed. If you like this video, don't forget to click like or maybe subscribe or grab a channel membership. You get extra videos, vlogs, and access to the Discord. If you liked this video here, you might want to check out this one. It's a look at some of the moments you may have forgotten from Amberlynn's 2022. Thank you again for joining me, and until we meet again, please be kind, and hasta luego.